In this video, I'll be taking you through the process of image acquisition for the Odyssey Classic Infrared Imaging System. Now, when you open up Image Studio, it should try to make a, a connection with the instrument. And so you enter in your username and password right here and press OK. And once that connection has been established, the buttons here on the Acquire ribbon will become active. Now there are a series of presets that you can use, uh, ranging from uh, gel-based assays, small animal imaging, uh, membrane type of applications, uh, plate-based assays like the Incel Western, uh, and slides. And I'm going to set this for membrane because I'm going to be doing a Western blot scan. The next pull down right here is for the analysis type. And so you can preset the, the analysis type before you do the scan. So if you know that you're going to be doing a Western analysis on this particular image, you can preset that right here. I'm just going to go with no analysis right now, uh, just for simplicity. Uh, but you can change the analysis type at any point uh, after the acquisition also. The image table info, this allows you to enter in information about the scan before you actually start. So if you would like to add information about the antibodies or the sample types that you have, you can type that in right here and then that will appear along uh, here in, in the comment field for, for the uh, specific image that you type this in for. Now if you leave this checked, this information will be applied to each of the images that you acquire during this session of Image Studio. So what that means is that if you close out of Image Studio and come back at a later point, you would have to re-enter that information again. But if you want to do it afterwards, you can just simply double click here in the comment field and type in that information right there. The intensity settings, uh, these will adjust the overall signal of the image. And so if you turn this higher, uh, the default setting is five for most applications and that's generally a good starting point. But if you turn this up, you will get a higher intensity scan. And uh, each channel is independent of each other, so you can set those separately. You can turn off one of the wavelengths if you would like to as well, um, but it does not save any time during the scan, but it will only generate one image file and uh, save you a little bit of file space that way. Now, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to set this to high, uh, just so you can see what uh, having a too intense scan will give you. The resolutions, uh, there are five resolution settings that range from 21 to 337 microns. And this is a measurement of how large each one of the pixels are going to be. So a larger number means that you're going to have a larger pixel and lower resolution. Generally for Western blots, we would recommend that you do either 169 or 84 microns. The, uh, the higher resolutions are really for more applications uh, such as uh, arrays or tissue sections, those types of things. And for the plate-based assays, 169 is generally uh, what you will want to use. Uh, and just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to do a 337 micron scan, just so you can see uh, what scanning at too low of a resolution will give you. The next setting here is the quality. And the default setting is lowest. And the reason for that is that the lowest quality will give you the fastest scan speed. And if you go with a higher quality, it will give you a minor increase in your signal to noise, uh, but generally you will not notice any difference. And uh, it does have a fairly major effect on the scan time. So just to get the fastest scan, uh, we do recommend that you go with lowest. The focus offset, uh, you can change the, the focal point of the optics. And for membrane-based assays, uh, we do recommend zero because that's right at the plane of the glass. Uh, for uh, gels, it will be half the thickness of the gel. If you have a one millimeter Kumasi stain gel, you would set that to 0 0.5. For plate-based assays, uh, generally a 96 well plate has an approximately three millimeter offset and that is the distance from the scan bed to the bottom of the wells. Other types of plates may have uh, slightly different focal offsets, and that may be something that you have to determine empirically. 
The flip image is strictly for plates. Uh, since it is imaging from underneath, it does have to flip it top to bottom to get it into the right orientation. For the scan area, I can either click draw new, or if I come down here, I can click in the middle and then I can adjust my scan area uh, depending on uh, the dimensions of your blot. And the coordinates along the uh, X and Y axis here uh, can be determined by using the rulers that are on the plane that are on the glass on the scan bed. Now, if you have more than one blot that you want to scan, you can click the add button right here and draw a secondary scan area. Now, if um, if your blots have widely differing uh, amounts of fluorescence, uh, this may not be your best option because it will use the same exact intensity settings and resolution settings for both of the images. But if both of your images or both of your blots have approximately the same amount of fluorescence, you can use this and uh, just to save yourself a little bit of time uh, because it will uh, generate two uh, separate acquisition files for you. But for right now, I'm just going to go with one acquisition. And also, if you have if you have several blots that are approximately the same size, if I draw a box that bounds all of them. I can then split this, and then if I do a two by two split, now each one of these becomes separate uh, scan areas. But since I only have one blot to scan right now, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, use this single scan area and press start. Now the image will appear while it's scanning, and so if you see something is very wrong with the settings, uh, as we'll see here with this high scan intensity. You can click cancel and that will delete the scan. Uh, if you're watching it as it's going along and you see that you've scanned far enough, you can click stop and it will just stop it at that point and it will save the image. So once the scan is initialized here and it starts downloading the image, it will appear here in the scan area. So this is what I was talking about with having the intensity set too high. We have a lot of saturations on the image. And also with the 337 microns, it uh, has some very jagged pixels on here. So I'm just going to let this finish scanning. And I'm going to use this to fine tune my scan area once it has completed. Now there are going to be a series of pop-up windows that appear uh, after the scan has been completed. I'm going to come back to that here uh, once we do the, um, the, the proper scan intensities. I'm just going to cancel out of this and I'll explain that here in just a, just a moment. So once that has finished, finished downloading, I'm going to reset my scan area. Now we do have millimeter increments, so it does give you the ability to do some uh, fine tuning with this. So now I'm gonna turn my intensities down. I'm going to increase my resolution to 169 microns. And once I change all that, it does give you an approximate scan time right there. And I'm going to click start. And again, the image will appear uh, while it's scanning. And once it has uh, started to appear on the screen, if you would like, you can make adjustments to the brightness and contrast. And, uh, but, but that has no effect on the quantification values. That's simply changing how it looks on the screen. Okay, so the scan has started now. And so momentarily, we'll, we will have the, the first part of the image appear.
And so you can see that changing the intensity values has a dramatic effect on the appearance of the image. Okay, so once the scan has completed, we do see these series of pop-up windows. And these six uh, images that you see right here are different uh, automatic adjustments to the image. And, but as I said, this has no effect whatsoever on the quantification. It is simply uh, changing the screen presentation of the image. And so you just look through the six images and pick the one that looks the best to you. And then there's another window that will appear that allows you to do some fine tuning. So the signal is the overall brightness of the image. So you can do a little bit of fine tuning with that. The background is setting the background threshold. If I set this to brighter, you will notice that the, the background is a little more apparent. If I go dimmer, it minimizes that. And then the midtones is a parameter that we call the K value. And the K value is similar to gamma correction, except for uh, a gamma correction of one is linear representation of the pixels. And that is the same as a K value of zero. So a K of zero is equal to a gamma of one. And if you turn the K value up to one, that will then be a logarithmic presentation of the um, pixel intensities. But again, it has no effect whatsoever on the quantification. And then when I click done, it takes me to uh, the same set of options for the 800 channel as well. So I click on one of them and then I can adjust the overall brightness. I can adjust the background threshold and then the midtones. Now, if you do not want those pop-up windows to appear following an acquisition and you want to do your image adjustment manually, if you click on the image ribbon right here, in the display group, there are options right here, and you can uncheck these, and then those, those pop-up windows will not appear following the acquisition. It's completely up to you. Uh, it's however you want to do your image adjustment uh, is uh, completely at your, at your discretion. So if you have any further questions about image acquisition for the Odyssey Classic, uh, please refer to either the manual or the help section, which can be accessed right up here. Thank you.